Hey there, welcome to my lazy review of the Crow 2024, not the Brandon Lee version. And like so many people out there, you know, I did watch a trailer and I'm like, hey, it looks kind of mediocre at best, but also the makeup job on Bill Skarsgård, I just wasn't feeling it. But you know what? I will always say one thing. I know so many people out there will not give this film a chance and understandably so because The Crow, for many people, myself included, is a fun, iconic movie. Maybe flawed, but I love it for what it is. And how could anybody, you know, replace the role of Brandon Lee and also recapture the performance? The one thing, and I'm trying to go into this film with an optimistic view, is that I know certain changes from the comics had to be made. And also, you know, obviously with the untimely death of Brandon Lee, they had to make certain changes from the final cut. And this film wouldn't have that going in. Perhaps, maybe, perhaps, I'm not sure. This film could correct some mistakes or just maybe be closer to the source material. I have no idea. I will go into this film with an open mind. If I'm the only idiot on YouTube who likes this film, I will always be authentic and say, hey, listen, I like this movie. If I think it's shit, I'll just say it's shit. I'll just be honest and, yeah, guys, let's go check out Bill Skarsgård being the crow. Yeah, that's all I can say. But do me a favor and enjoy my intro. Okay, yeah, I'm back. And of course, I put some water back in my hair. Also, I have some leftover Pepsi with my Regal cup, but if you're new to my channel, not always, but more often than not, when I review something, I have a little assistant in alcohol, precious alcohol. For some movies, you just need something to drink because uh, The Crow, it was a movie. Now, oh God, what, it, 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 it's hard to talk. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck am I watching here? It takes a lot, and I mean an awful lot for me to hate a film. I can tell you one thing with this film, I did not hate this film by any means, but what I was, was really, really fucking bored. Boring. When you watch the first movie, obviously it opens up and Eric is already dead and very quickly into the movie, he becomes the crow. He puts on the iconic makeup and then he just goes on a killing spree. It's a simple revenge story and the crow is a simple movie. I'm fine with it being that. It doesn't need to be complicated. This does give Eric a backstory, but the problem is, it's him and Shelly for the first 45 minutes, and my god, I'm not sure who this actress is playing Shelly, I don't even care to look up her name, but it's like, they're in two different movies. Every time she talks and she breathes, it's like, what is she doing? Was it her first take? You feel like my pus. And Bill Skarsgård is trying to not capture Brandley's performance, he's not trying to mimic him. He's given it as good as he can with the dialogue, but now it's Eric and Shelly meeting at a rehab. And I'm like, at this point, why even call it Eric and Shelly if you're changing their whole dynamic and what they're about? Now we have a different villain. Now the big bad wants to kill Shelly and what he's doing is sacrificing girls by talking into their ears. He wants to make himself live longer by sacrificing innocent girls and sending them to hell. And oh Christ. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm not making this stuff up, but after that, so, I mean, Eric, he, he gets killed. <laughs> My God, as I'm saying this, I'm trying not to laugh, but in the first film, you had Eric be, you know, shot and stabbed and pushed out a window, and Shelly, she eventually was um, assaulted, we'll say. It was pretty damn brutal and horrific. This is those two coming back to their apartment, and the bad guys are waiting for them. What they do is they take plastic bags, they put it over their heads, and they smother them to death. So, yeah. It goes from being pushed out a window and brutally stabbed and murdered to being suffocated by plastic bags. <laughs> okay, so of course Eric wakes up and now he's in this limbo area with a bunch of crows and this weird mysterious guy. I'm not sure if this guy is a crow or he's a messenger. You never know, they never explain it. What the hell's going on? Eric pretty quickly realizes the fact that he's dead and of course like the other film, he's sent back, but it's kind of weird because the guy pushes him into a puddle, and of course he realizes the fact that, okay, he can't be hurt. No, he can be hurt. This time he feels pain, and he feels a lot of pain, and he has no problem screaming like a little bitch sometimes because he's not a badass, he's a, a pussy. But Eric is hurt and killed, eventually sent back to limbo again because he dies, and he still can't regenerate, and it's... I'll spoil the rest in a minute. Let me just get into my three lazy questions, all right, because I just need some more of this, but... Question number one is pretty simple. How to feel about the film? I mean, what else do I say about it? And oh, why call it The Crow? Why use the characters of Eric Draven and Shelley? My God, there is no chemistry, no love between these characters. I just, I want to hate it, honestly, because it's really friggin' bad. But I'm gonna tell myself that it's just goddamn boring. 
It's just a big wasted opportunity. That makes no sense. And at one point, no bullshit, Eric, he's supposed to come back to life, but he can't because he doubts his love for Shelly and he loses his crow healing powers. And at one point, they can't be together because Eric is going to trade his life for her life and her soul. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, this is goddamn ridiculous. All right, let's get on to question number two. Question number two is, would I recommend that you see this film? Goddamn sure, no. If you guys want to watch a good Crow movie, go back and watch the one with Brandon Lee. This movie, totally friggin' skip it. I would not recommend you watching it. I will give them a shred, a little bit of credit, because if you did watch the trailer, of course, there is a good maybe five minutes in the last 20 minutes where Eric has some kills, and some of the kills are kind of creative for an R-rated film. But overall, skip the fucking movie. I would even say just YouTube the one action sequence in the entire goddamn two-hour movie. No, I don't recommend this film. Don't go and see it. But, hey, guess what? Because of Regal, I didn't pay for this movie. Question number three, do I think that this movie is worth your hard-earned money? I mean, in case you couldn't tell, fuck no. I didn't pay for this movie. Had I paid for it, I would have been in a pretty bad mood. But because I didn't pay for it, I'm not even mad about it. This movie is not worth your money. It's not worth a rental. I would even say when it's free on a streaming service, don't even fucking waste your time, guys. It's a, it's a waste of money. Every single movie I review, I have to rate. This one is no different. So how do I feel about the Crow remake, the 2024 movie starring Bill Skarsgård? And not a competition, not hard by any means, but the Crow is simply a big fucking waste of time. Waste of time. I'm not against another Crow film because let's be honest, guys, we've had more than one Spider-Man or Batman or Superman. Maybe one day... We'll get a film closer to the source material, but you know what? This one isn't it. It's just, why was this made for? Why? That's, that's all I can ask is why. I'll see you next time. Let me finish this. Grab my buddy Bender. Check my watch because I'm always fucking busy. And that's it. That's all I can say. Cheers. This calls for a drink. That stuff is really good talking about. A really terrible movie. So one last thing. I need one of these. It's a catchphrase. It's called a catchphrase. I'll see you later. Go watch the original version, but as always, let me edit this and then I'm heading back to work.